My name is Giulio D'Ercole. I'm 62 years old and I have been a professional photographer for the past 18 years. I was born and raised in Rome, though in my adult life I have lived in many different places around the world. In Kassel, Germany, Los Angeles, then six years in New York, 12 years in Nairobi, Kenya, and then back to Rome in 2014. In 2022, I started teaching photography at Pantheon Institute of Technology and Design, a private university near the Vatican City. Talking about my photography, I must say that even though I enjoy photography in a large variety of subjects, I consider myself mainly a humanist photographer. I guess that is because I have always been interested in psychology and human behavior. Since I was a teenager, I have been interested in observing people, the way they communicate, feel, act and interact, hide or show their emotions. I enjoy taking pictures of them, trying my best to scratch the surface to find at least a hint of what lies behind it, the truth beyond the appearance, a quick revelation of the essence hidden by the curtain of the persona. I'm fascinated by the sudden emerging of a smile, a laughter, a sparkling light in the eyes, a gesture of affection, or the unavoidable struggle we all fight against time and loneliness. Like Helmut Newton said talking about himself, I'm a professional voyeur, hopefully one with a sense of poetry, I would like to add. I guess this attitude was also influenced by my previous professional background. In fact, my career started off working in theatre, then I studied to be a scriptwriter, but finally I became a TV producer. In 1997, I moved to New York where I was hired as senior producer by RAI, the Italian state-owned national TV. Here, three productions where I worked as producer and interviewer truly had a huge impact on me. A documentary on the liberation of Italy during the Second World War, told by the veterans of the American and the Canadian army that fought in my country. A documentary on Italian migration in the US about people that made or made it not in search of the American dream. And a long series of news clips on the aftermath of September 11, for which I interviewed cops, firefighters, people working in the World Trade Center area and the victims' relatives. Could I get closer to raw humanity than that? Well, after two years, yes, I did. In fact, in 2003, I moved again, moving from New York to Nairobi, Kenya. Here, I was hired by UNESCO as communication specialist for a media project in Somalia. In the meantime, I founded Canvas Africa Production, a company producing documentaries on humanitarian projects implemented by UN agencies and NGOs. Traveling to the most remote and neglected areas of 14 sub-Saharan countries, I experienced a much-needed and enriching reality check, which gifted me with a new and different perspective on my beliefs and ideas. But most of all, making such documentaries allowed me to enter in close contact with the forgotten, the vulnerable, the unseen. As I was directing producing documentaries, I got more and more involved with photography. I felt photography could be my true medium to relate to the world, to document, represent and give meaning to it, as it also helped me to find my space, my calmness, my love for life. That is when I became a professional photographer, starting from the day UNICEF bought some of my photos to publish them on their magazines, reports, posters. Then I began being hired to shoot photo reportage on several aid projects. Living in Kenya also gave me the opportunity to travel around the continent working on my own projects, photographing some of the traditional tribes of Africa, a continent that was and still is on the verge of a radical change. I photographed the Mazais and the Turkana in Kenya, the Himba of Namibia, the Kara, the Mursi and the Hammer living in the Amo Valley in Ethiopia. The trip to Ethiopia generated the project On the Road to Change, The Broken Balance, 10 photos showing how development and mass tourism are basically transforming the life and the traditions of the nomadic pastoralist tribes of the Omo Valley. 
My work gave birth also to several exhibitions, none of them focusing on the pornography of poverty, but rather on the beauty and depth of the human beings I met. The titles of my exhibitions speak for themselves. The Face of African Dignity, Rural African Women, Beauty Beyond Eagle, Life on Lake Turkana, Somalia, Life in and Beyond, Dignity, Beauty, Joy, Life, Love, Empathy, Hope. This is what I saw, even in the poorest slums, in the most arid landscapes, in the farthest and most unknown lands of Africa, untouched by tourism and development, and I always, always found it. In 2012, finally married and father of a beautiful daughter, I moved back to Rome, still working on humanitarian projects. Slowly by slowly, my photography turned towards Rome and Italy, the landscapes, art, architecture, and mostly on people and street life. Again, watching people, their life conditions, as well as the ephemeral small little things that can happen in the blink of an eye or at the speed of a click, is what holds my heart my breath, my soul. I photograph men and women, youth, elderly, lovers, lonely people. I do it downtown as much as in the outskirts or in the countryside and in small villages. It does not matter the age or the status. Everybody has a story to tell. And if I'm able to see that story, that sparkle of life, that human trace in them, I try to photograph it. Maybe influenced by my background, I think about my photography as a way to document life, but also as an inspiring media that can be used to transcend reality. I believe poetry is what we miss today. With my images, I try to write those poems I used to scribble on notebooks, paper napkins and tablecloths when I was a young man experiencing life and love for the first time. Maybe that is the reason why, when COVID struck and put all of us at a stall, I conceived a multimedia, fully immersive, groundbreaking project on the impact of the pandemic as seen and photographed by photographers around the world. Our home, a shared new world that started with the generous cooperation of frames, is unfortunately still in search of funds. In September 2022, I moved from Rome to Todi a hilltop medieval village of 7,000 souls in Umbria, a green landlocked region in Italy, far from the hustle and bustle of the Eternal City and bordering with Tuscany. The foggy sun rises and sunsets, the green fields, the autumn foliage of the woods, the beauty of the rolling hills in the spring and the warm summer light on iconic locations inspired me to focus more and more on landscape photography, a genre I now truly enjoy because it magically allows me to express my deepest moods and emotions. My surely not humble dream is to be one day considered a sort of a Georges Simenon of photography. And if I don't think of myself yet as an artist, I like to think I'm at least a decent empathetic artisan, able to capture the more or less hidden nuances of human beings' life, their passions, feelings, and emotions, possibly with a touch of love, melancholy, joy, and hope. In 2018, I founded Rome Photo Fan Tours, and very recently, I created Italy Photo Fan Tours. With these two companies, I share my vision and my knowledge providing private and customized traveling photography workshops in Rome and several other Italian regions, and in the next years, hopefully, in Africa as well. <music>